Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about some technology in the classroom. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today I'm going over some of my basic things of using technology, cell phones in the classroom. So these are my three things that I like to do. All right, first off, let's go over the basic caveats. Number one, you might have a district policy, wherever you teach, that says students are not allowed to use technology in the classroom. I understand that. The goal of having those policies typically is because they don't want the students engaged in personal stuff instead of in the learning activities. Totally get that. Let's turn this into the learning activity. For the basics, number one, this is all A, about consistency and be about etiquette. I'm doing this video right before the holiday break so that it's right in between Thanksgiving and the winter break session. So you have that dead heat of nothing but three weeks to cram as much as possible. So this is sometimes a really good time to test this stuff out because it's kind of forcing you to do this every single day. Number one, consistency. You got to keep it up. Otherwise, it becomes a problem because you started something, but you never really showed the finish line. And the students will take that and they'll run with it and they'll use the cell phones or whatever. So let's get that off our chest first. Got to be consistent. Etiquette. Cell phones, technology in general, nobody understands an etiquette policy for how these things should work inside the classroom. I don't have all the answers, but I got a couple ideas and that's what I'm going with here. So if you disagree, toss it down in the comments, have that conversation with me. I know what's worked for me and, I always, and that's the goal of why I do this channel. I do this channel because I like to make videos for you guys to help you guys out and also to remember how I do certain things. But the etiquette is this right now cell phones and technology in the classroom is the old west there is no rules and we're all kind of going by the seat of our pants let's be honest that's how it is so with that said let's try and figure out a way to make it more better there i didn't really have a word there that was we're just trying to make it not not so bad and make it more good most of us have access to Chromebooks. If you don't have Chromebooks available for your students or you don't have technology readily available for your students, yes, this does not apply to you because we do have to make sure that everybody across the board is able to do this. But we are providing this as an option. You don't have to take notes on your cell phone, but you could take notes on your cell phone. And for some of those students where like that is their life, this is their entire existence is this, sometimes you have to think about what kind of students are we trying to create? I, I'm doing this mainly because when I was in middle school level, when I was teaching middle school, this became a kind of an issue for a while where you're, the students are using cell phones or, or they have something in their hands and you want to not have them distracted by the object. The first thing I use technology, cell phones and tablets for in the classroom, note taking. Why do we take notes on devices rather than handwritten notes. The kids are not fast with a pen and pencil. They just, they're just not. They, they're faster texting, typing on their cell phone. So let's make them use them that way. After the kids take their notes, they have to then email them to me. So then I can give them the point grade for A, taking the notes, or if it's a daily grade, depending on how you teach the class. But I do that up front. So then A, I get the points for what they've done. And then also I can see if they got the assignment done. If they failed to do the assignment, that's also on them. That's, this is a part of the efficacy you've got to be able to do your own assignment I'm giving you these tools to do it now if they're not doing it and they have to go back to handwriting out the notes because this device is not working for them you have your answer and they can see that oh I'm not getting my work done I'm gonna fail the class sometimes the kids have to know that because they don't understand why we tell them to do something but again it's all about using it every single day it's that consistency thing so I have them email me their notes and this gives me a couple different benefits number one I've gotten the results immediately of what they've got done so that I can give them the grade number two you can't lose an email um, you can delete an email but you can't miss it it's not missing kids can search up what their assignment needs to be and let's be honest especially if you've done something like this before where they're emailing you assignments putting something in a in the in the subject line the title of the notes these ki most kids don't understand how to save a document properly how you have to write out that code that that little bit of like what is the title of this document going to be they don't know that they haven't been taught that like I said, it's the old West. There's a lot of things in technology that we do off the top of our heads. We understand that, that the students don't know anything about because they've never been taught all of this stuff. And then number three, the best thing about doing the note taking data, we're compiling amounts of data to show that our students are getting better at learning. That's a, that's a number one thing that administrators are always like, I need to prove it. This is working towards the proof function. All right, let's get into number two for number two classroom treasure hunt. 
I do this because uh, most of us have to have like a word wall or like a bulletin board of learning ideas, something in the classroom. During the class time, you're going to be going over a topic. And from that topic, the kids then have to figure out how to answer certain questions. Well, they can do use the textbooks and hunt words, images out of the textbooks. They can find images off of a word wall. They have to use things inside the classroom. So I'll give my students a question about art history. I have a timeline wall. On that wall, the kids have to find a mosaic illustration of the Byzantine era. Everybody's going to give the same picture, usually. I also have a stack of art history textbooks in the back that the kids can find images. So using Padlet, all the stuff that I use, I'm putting in the description, but there's other programs, find programs that work for you. Do not use the ones that you just don't know or don't get. Find something that you like. So the kids go and take a picture of the text take a picture of the image and then they submit it to the padlet so on the my whiteboard we have like a running wall of all the pictures that were submitted so that I can see that the kids all participated again you're getting direct correlation between they learned something and then they're showing me that they learned it they they're they're finding the answers to those questions data i'm showing that proof of what you guys have achieved here i can then show it to the administrator so that they're showing that they can use the, that they can apply the knowledge Cameras. I know that most of us have some sort of policy. You can't take pictures of things in school. Well, it, here's the thing. The pictures are that they're not taking pictures of each other, they're not taking pictures of students. That I completely understand. But if they're having to post those pictures immediately, you can see who paid, who took a picture of what. Um, plus, if they have this policy, it's because somebody did something bad in the past and they had to write a policy for it. Kind of go over that with the kids. That you're, this is a learning tool. This is forcing students to understand how and why we do certain things. If you're having a student do something that they don't typically want to do, they're not going to do it. And if they're doing something that they didn't think was that they could do, and then now you're letting them do it, now it becomes a fun experience. So it's either a chore or it's playtime. And it's going to be either or. It's pretty cut and dry in that fact. I'm always trying to say, I want to do this. Why? Because it's less work that we have to do. So at the end of the day, it really is a lot less work overall. Uh, being sending sending an email where you can kind of just go through it really quickly. If you have me, I have a slate, which is my Chromebook. I, I thumb through my Chromebook very quickly so I can just kind of see what what got turned in. I can just kind of knock them out really quickly, hit in the grade, same time, very fast. For some of them, it's going to be a chore where, oh man, I got to use my phone again today. I didn't charge my phone last night. I got to handwrite some notes. We're starting to build that etiquette factor where understanding how you behave in class with this technology because that's one thing that nobody gets nobody under understands why we have to do certain things so explain that it's, it's a it's a needed thing take those pictures post those pictures up and you can see who did what and who got what posted and keep on moving on if the kids don't have a cell phone you can also do the same thing with a chromebook finally number three the ticket out the door this is an old school idea you learn something in class on a little sheet of paper you write down your little two cents of what you learned that day you turn it in take it out the door done let's turn it into an electronic version most of us have heard of kahoot i have used kahoot i like kahoot it's pretty fun my spanish teacher loves Kahoot. I'm like, it's cool. I prefer quizzes myself. That's the one I like. And for us, all of us have to write some form of lesson plans. I think most of us write lesson plans. When you're writing the lesson plans, I put down a couple bullets of these are the three or four learning targets. These are the topics that we're going to be covering. And I'll pull those and I'll put them into quizzes as a blank assignment. So when I make my quiz up, I'll just put in my question or my topic and then do it as a short answer or as a fill in the blank section. I don't do it as a multiple choice. That's a lot more work. I come up with multiple answers, but do it really quickly with leaving it blank. Then the kids have to answer that. And I automatically have data that they a completed or B got it right or wrong. That gives me more stuff to again, go to the administrator and say, this is what we're learning in class. This is the mark, the targets that we're trying to achieve. This is where they started. This is where they finished. And we learned something because the points went up. That's the goal. And right before we go, let's remember this. There's an etiquette with technology with cell phones and everything else that happens in life that you have to be taught to do certain things basic etiquette policies but here's the thing with technology in the classroom nobody has a policy nobody has taught etiquette so sometimes we have to force that hand so it's all about let's come up with a way that is beneficial to the teacher and the student everybody gets to use technology and we're using it in a way that puts us puts the learning forward that's the goal move the needle forward move everything forward progress forward that is the point point. and with that said 
let's wrap up class. Starting off first with is don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers and students as we possibly can. Want to spread the learning as far and wide as possible. If during today's class you had a question, comment, or concern, raise the hands in the comments below. Happy to answer questions from my classmates. But up front, I don't have all the answers. I'm not even pretending I have all the answers. But what I do have is a couple ideas and I want to see all of us do better. That's it. That's why I make these videos. I want to see us all do better. Also, I forget things. That's why I make a lot of videos. Other than that, I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys. Have fun. Learn some technology. See you.